I want to highlight what we saw in previous workflows that we can run into isobaric species when we are running database queries, especially when dealing with large databases. So I'm going to use my walk chromatogram tool again, left clicking on there, and just place my cursor on this peak we are seeing at 8.3 minutes. Recall we saw a isotope cluster, which is characteristic of chlorine. We could also see a potential sodiated adduct, which is 21.98 Dalton on. The problem we might run into is we, especially when dealing with large databases, we often have molecules with the same chemical formula and we would need to get additional information either on fragmentation patterns of this particular molecule to get gain confidence on what the structure really looks like. To illustrate this example, I want to show you what the database entries look like in the Forensics Toxicology database. You can see we've got three entries exactly with the same formula and the neutral mass, which would result in that 285 protonated species. So in this case, we aren't really sure which molecule is eluting there. It was a standard that was injected, and I know what the composition of the standard was, but what do you do in the case of an unknown sample? How do you gain confidence in associating the right molecule with that retention time? In your acquisition tool pack, you should have the software called Molecular Structure Correlator, and in the software, we can create workflows that will rank the fragment ions based on the structures, if the structures are present, and help us eliminate some candidates or allow us to score different candidate compounds. For us to import data into molecular structure correlator, we need some targeted MSMS data. For that, I will open a MSMS data file. And here you can see, if you put your walk chromatogram tool at that peak at 8.5, you can see there are instances where that 285 ion was selected for fragmentation and we have different fragmentation energies. We will now create a compound discovery workflow using the targeted MSMS compound binding algorithm to pull out information for that target peak. I'm not going to use the uh, library for identification, nor am I using formula generation. In my identification tab, I might need to go to compounds view to get the correct menus. So in my compound discovery under find by targeted MSMS, I will use my Agile 2 integrator. These default values are um, good and I will also limit my height by 10,000. The extraction of the spectra will happen at greater than 10% of the peak height and it will not include saturated spectra. So if we then focus our workflow on that peak between 8.2 and 8.5 minutes, we should be able to generate an entry, targeted MSMS entry for that 285 peak. And now you can see there's certain spectra associated with that targeted fragmentation at different collision energies. We will now export this data as a CHEF file. Exporting it as a CHEF file creates a CHEF file of whatever you've highlighted in this table and it'll place it in the same directory as the data file. You can now see what information is contained in the chip file. We can see the peak location, probably some details regarding intensity, what type of device it was acquired on, and some idea of the, um, those look like calibration actuals, as well as 
uh, it looks like the coefficients that was used in the QTOF calibration peaks as well as MS fragmentation peaks. We will now create a project in molecular structure correlator. We will now add that file. And once we've added the file, some of the information should be populated in a table. We can now select different methods for searching and different databases for searching. For now, I'm just going to screen my forensics toxicology PCDL, and then we can go to ChemSpider or other web-based searches. For my MGF settings, my molecular formula generator settings, I would like to add chlorine because I know from the isotope cluster structure there was a chlorine present. When I select my structure sources, I'm going to go for one of my PCDLs first, and I'm going to search only for the five best formula. Other settings like structure filters and minimum MSC scores can be specified. Maximum number of compounds will be can tailor in subsequent searches. If I hit the run button, I should get a result. And in this case, those three formula were transferred from the PCDL because the software was able to calculate the correct neutral mass from the information provided in the MSMS spectra. You can see these are now ranked based on score, and we can see the overall scores 83, 73, and 73 have been associated with each of these molecules. If we look in the right hand pane, we can then see information regarding some of the intensity of the MSMS fragments and the weight some of these carry. For now, we can see diazepam for a particular mass of a fragment. We can see some substructures are being proposed and there's certain weights associated with that substructure depending on how likely it is to form or fragment these chemical bonds. So you can see how this is useful for investigating potential fragmentation pathways. Let's try and do the search with a larger chemical database like ChemSpider. I will change my structure sources for ChemSpider and for now, I will also reduce the number of compounds from this result. And I will also filter by metadata to ensure that the minimum number of references for this compound should be 100 or more to avoid getting low referenced or low impact structures. If I then run through this workflow, it might take a little bit longer than what we've previously seen for PCDLs. So here you can see some of the results from the ChemSpider where diazepam was ranked higher than the Mazendol structure. And again, you can explore the different fragmentation pathways and the likelihood whether these are formed is stipulated by the score given here. If we look at the potential fragments for this molecule, we can then explore some of the likelihoods of these fragments. And we can look at the weights and the intensity percentages. This is transferred from the MSMS fragmentation details. So in this case, we can see there's one fragment proposed with that mass from the structure where we have to lose a hydroxyl group. And part of this five membered ring needs to fragment as well as a loss of the chlorine. If we look at the likelihood of that in the diazepam molecule, we can see that in this case, this part of the molecule needs to fragment as well as this part and this loss. And therefore we can rank the likelihood of these chemical dissociations in the fragmentation, during fragmentation. And this helps rank and decide what is the 
more likely chemical structure and formula.